Eurasia is the largest continent of our planet. These boundless steppes and mighty mountains became the cradle of the Turkic world thousands of years ago. I am Samat Tolgbay, a journalist and researcher. I follow in the footsteps of our ancestors, in the footsteps of the Turkic tribes and people who engendered a great nomadic civilization, who left our steps and lived in different parts of the world. The school of nomads studying the past, creating the present to build the future. My journey through amazing Uzbekistan continues. I'm heading to the Fergana Valley. Its history has deep roots. By the way, this is the most populated region of the country. And therefore, there is even an active traffic flow here, even on the intercity highway. village after village. I ended up in a town, its name has been heard, perhaps since the Great Silk Road was laid along these roads. This is Rishtan, the centuries-old center of blue ceramics not only in Uzbekistan, but throughout Central Asia. You know my special love for ancient crafts. Unfortunately, today it is rarely possible to meet hereditary masters who would preserve ancient technologies. But in Rishtan, everything is different. Here on every street, you'll meet at least five pottery workshops. And among them, there are not a few hereditary ceramists who have preserved ancient technologies. So I arrived at the address. I will get acquainted with Rishtan ceramics and even try to learn the basics of this craft. Master Saeed lives here. Wow, it seems I didn't get to the house, but to the museum. There are so many dishes. No wonder they say that Rishtan is the birthplace of ceramics. This is the first time I have seen such a courtyard. What can I say? I am just surprised. I found Saeed in the workshop. He and his student at work did not even notice how I entered. Hello, how are you? Everything is good. How are you doing? My name is Samat. I am from Kazakhstan. I study Turkic history, general traditions, customs, and of course, crafts. I know that Rishtan is called the birthplace of ceramics. Let's start with a story. When did you start pottery? Rishtan ceramics has a thousand-year history. Our ancestors have long been engaged in pottery. Starting from the 11th century, they began to make dishes from local clay. From the 11th century? Yes, starting from the 11th century. 
Most often the craft is passed down from generation to generation. And who taught you to make jugs from clay? I learned from my father and grandfather. So you are a hereditary potter. Yes, if you look like this, then for the Rishtans, pottery and ceramics were the main craft. There is of course gardening and agriculture and animal husbandry. But still, the main occupation is the production of ceramics. For centuries, our dishes have been sold not only in Uzbekistan, but also in Russia and other countries. It is popular in 14 countries. During the Soviet Union, there was even a factory, where 5,000 people worked. After the collapse, the craftsmen opened their shops. Today I would like to learn your craft. Of course, in a couple of days I will not become a master, but I can at least try. Tell me, what could I do? You can try to make a bowl or a jug. You can do whatever you want with clay. Well then, let's get started. Let's go. We started work with clay extraction. We dug it in Saeed's backyard. In other words, all Rishtan clay can be used for making a jug. It is a clean product. That is why pottery was developed here. It is an excellent raw material with good quality. After firing, it turns red. This is a characteristic feature of Rishtan clay. The masters themselves call it gold. Because for the production of ceramics, clay is enough to dilute with water. Now Murajan will teach me how to make a jug. In Kazakhstan, I used a couple of times the potter's wheel. But naturally everything has been forgotten. Therefore, Murajan, let me sit in your place and you stand nearby and tell me. Yes, of course. Looking at how you work, it seems that everything is easy. But I understand that working with clay requires special skill. Are you finishing? Finished, right? Yes, finished. Then, let's change places. Take your dish. First, you need to knit the clay well to release all the air. And if memory serves me right, then the center of the pottery wheel should be determined. Moisten the bottom well and set the clay exactly in the middle. Well, and be sure to wet your hands in water. Yes, wet your hands and spin the circle quickly. And hold your hands tight. From above. Twist like that and click like that. Now from the edge. It's hard at the same time to rotate the potter's wheel with your feet and also work like this with your hands. Twist well. Remove your hands, now twist. I boasted that I already took lessons from the potter, and now I'm ashamed, because it turns out badly. What do you want to make of this? I don't even know what can be done. I wanted a jug in general, but I understand that I can do it. One must turn on imagination. Now push inside. Yes, stronger with two hands. Now 
Now squeeze both hands. More, more. That is all. Wait. Let me correct you. I don't think I'll go down there. Before that, I learned in an automated pottery wheel, and this food and therefore it is difficult to twist. Marajan specifically studies on such a circle, because tourists like me love ancient crafts. Well, it seems that I would become not bad potter. Look, something appears. <laughs> How about you, Make? Look, the master made it, and this is my work. Honestly, it's not much like a jug. But there are such works of art in history that began to be appreciated only after a while. Perhaps in a couple of centuries, this thing will become one of the most valuable. But definitely not now. This is what I thought. Let's make a nose here, like this. Water will flow from here. How do you like it? Perhaps Said will be able to decorate my jug so that it will become very beautiful. Who knows? I decided to leave the rest of the work to the masters. As I said, Rishtan is a city of ceramists. According to historians, Clay has been burned here since time immemorial. Tombstones of the old cemetery also speak of this. The grave of the master can be easily identified. Rishtan has a 3,000 year history, and when archaeologists excavated in the Fergana Valley, they found a variety of artifacts. Among them are many finds from the Bronze Age to our time. Of course, they're all ceramic. Thus began a story about Rishtan by a local historian. This Aksakal rightfully knows a lot of interesting things about this city of masters. In conclusion, the historian concluded that Rishtan was, is, and will continue to be the capital of blue ceramics. No matter how many centuries have passed, it is difficult to disagree with these words. After all, both the mosque and the mausoleums are decorated with classic blue ceramics. And we can say with confidence that the time-tested lining will stand still for many centuries. People consider these places holy and make a pilgrimage. Shh. You hear? This is the beat of my heart. There is such silence that you can even hear how rumbles my empty stomach. Work is work, and lunch should be served on time.
This is Rustam Usmanov, the most famous ceramist in Rishtan. We began our acquaintance behind the Dastarkhan in the hospitable house of the master. Next to him, there are his children and students. They are all wonderful ceramists. I enjoyed pilaf and quenched my thirst with green tea. Now we can talk about the craft. Rustam Usmanov is not only a potter, but also a researcher of antiquities. More precisely, ceramic artifacts. He studies them, restores ancient drawings, ornaments. I would also call him a scientist who revived ancient art. Rustam Aga, despite the fact that I am far from pottery, I consider this a very beautiful and interesting craft. You could tell a story and everything you know about ceramics, because it is very interesting to me. Welcome to our house. Well, the history of Rishtan goes deep, into the depths of centuries. And according to archaeological excavations, Rishtan ceramics, here even ceramic samples are presented belong to the 9th, 10th centuries. These things are terracotta, burned but not glazed, and glaze appeared only in the 12th century. And the colors were not like they are now. Rishtan ceramics are believed to be blue, white, blue, but until the 14th century, the color of ceramics was completely different. There was engobe ceramics of pistachio, green, yellowish flowers. Tell us, please, what is traditional Rishtan ceramics? How is it different? Rishtan differs from many regions of Uzbekistan. That for blue ceramics. Ishkor glaze is considered to be used. It is here that glaze gives this color. Glaze is transparent. Just using these dyes of cobalt copper and manganese, it gives such an unusual color. Here is an example. There are fragments of old pottery ceramics found. They are used copper and cobalt, but it can always be in different ways. For example, copper can be curdled birch. A little bluish. For this they used cobalt. Before that the lazuli was used. It is called lazuar. It gives the deep blue color of miakya. It turns out that paints are made of iron oxide, so they never fade. Archaeologists call this pottery sapphire, because they retain their unique color. I'm very glad that I got to your workshop, that I met you personally. I admire your collection of ancient ceramics and, of course, the variety of your work. And taking the opportunity, I would like to become your student for one day today. You're welcome. We will show you our workshop. If you want, you can do something yourself. Thank you. I have already said that pottery in the East is most often passed down from father to son. An example of this is Demir, the son of the master Rustam. I am sure that thanks to the tradition of succession, blue ceramics has survived to the present day. See how interesting it is for tourists. They take pictures and admire the works of Demir. Really amazing art. Despite his youth, Demir as a potter reached certain heights. I decided not to bother him. I just want to watch and enjoy how he sculpts 
another masterpiece. Rishtan Ceramics amazes with its variety of drawings. Masters in the manufacture of dishes strictly observe three things. The very first thing is to create a unique pattern, then select the necessary colors and shades for it, and at the end correctly glaze it. Rishtan dishes were created not only to delight the eye with their beauty, but also in order to increase appetite. It is influenced by patterns and ornaments. For example, Rishtan's belief that the image of pomegranate on dishes strengthens the health of the owner and prolongs life, and almonds brings good luck and happiness. Another feature of Rishtan ceramics is the ability to maintain the temperature of food for a long time. Next to me, there is another Ruslan, the nephew of our master. He told an amazing fact. Please tell us how you can get glass from an ordinary camel's spine. The kind that we use is obtained from this plant. In Russian, it is called a potashnik. In Latin, it is called calidium. This plant contains potassium carbonate which gives glass. But in order to get specific crystals, you must first burn it, when fresh, right when it is collected in October, November. This is the season when we collect it. And a fresh plant first smolders. It produces slag from it. We call slag, but it can be like ashes, sand ashes. Does it look like this? Or is it? It is this kind of ashes. After the ashes, this already melts at 1200 degrees in special furnaces. When it cools down, crystals are already obtained. It is these crystals. <laughs> After that, these crystals are ground into powder, mixed with water and the dishes that we paint dipped in this liquid, and all dishes are covered with a thin layer of white powder, which when fired, again melts and turns into transparent glass. Look, really turned into glass. I noticed that only natural raw materials are used here. And in order to see firsthand what Ruslan showed us, let's see the next stage. Here is the process of glazing dishes. Please tell us more about this. Here the process of glazing takes place. After painting, after being painted, it is glazed. It plunges into the icing and it acquires such a white color. It is already ready for roasting. Please teach me this process. Yes. Here you take the scissors. Put a plate. Here you are. Please hold. To do like this? Yes. All. That's it. You can clean it with your hands. Open and place the scissors here. Let's try one more. You can also make tea bowl the same way. Put here. Heel and deep. You probably ask why such beautiful multicolored bowls were painted gray. And I will explain to you. After we dip them in the gray liquid, 
put them in the oven at 980 degrees and after firing, our bowls will turn into shiny and bright dishes. As I said earlier, glazed dishes are burned for 8 hours in an oven at 980 degrees. Now all the dishes are equally grey, but after the oven, it will turn into a multicolored. Masters call this oven magic. We'll see. Let's see what happened to our dishes, which burned for 8 hours and cooled for 8 hours. You probably also wonder what happened there. Oh, get ready! Now I will show you closer. The main thing is not to destroy this beauty. Wow! Look how beautiful! Here it turns out what kind of multicolored glazed dishes it is. Wonderful! And in this corner, there are artists. Thanks to them, the dishes look so beautiful and rich. Here they create not only dishes, but also wall tiles. And to paint them, it seems to me, is not an easy task. This is a whole art. It requires art from a master of patience, professionalism, and great imagination. I love to draw since childhood, and perhaps I'll also sit down here and paint a bowl for the masters. So to speak, I'll leave my mark on rich done dishes. I found a new hobby. Have you seen? My work, of course, is different from the master. This ornament is called satin. Now I'm learning to create it. Everything will work out. I'll finish this bowl now, and I'll draw a couple more for you. One, two? In fact, painting on ceramics gives a lot of pleasure and gives a feeling of some relaxation. I really like this kind of work. In Uzbekistan, ceramic housewares are always given to the owner of the new house. It is considered a symbol of wealth, prosperity and unity. By the way, I saw the same qualities among Rishtans. These are really very hospitable, kind, insanely talented people. So if you are in Uzbekistan, be sure to drop by the glorious town of Rishtan. <laughs>